Welcome to Gold in the Nets, Volume 3, Where It's At, an in-depth look at angles and positioning. In this video, we will be concentrating on the goaltender's angles and position and how it affects the game around him. Proper positioning and angles can be the goaltender's strongest asset. It eliminates much of the inconsistencies in a goaltender's play. When you can combine proper angle with effective positioning, you have the key to a strong foundation necessary to build a solid goaltender. Strong positional play resulting in true angles and positioning is achieved by enhancing the goaltender's understanding of what is being viewed by the opposition. During the video, we will also explore strengths and weaknesses of different styles of positional play and help you understand where you fit in as well as better prepare yourself. As a coach, you may explore the many different ways to scout out your opposition by the style that their goaltender plays. The perfect position for a goaltender begins with knowing your net to perfection, being exactly in the middle of the net and the puck telegraphing out to the maximum distance, thus taking away the majority of the shooter's options. Sounds so simple. <laughs> Let's take a closer look. Finding the middle of the net during a game can be difficult at times and is something that needs constant, continuous work. Tapping your goalposts can greatly assist you in being precisely square to the puck and tell you where the net is. However, once you are out covering your angle, it would not be advisable to return to the net each time you change your position. It is best to always start your play by being as precise as you can. That's why so many goaltenders slam their stick against the posts. It's not just to psych out their opponent, it is so that they can start each play perfectly centered with the puck and the net. As you can see, some goalies use a combination of their gloves and the stick. But if you watch most professional goaltenders, they all do it in one form or another. What these goaltenders are really doing is telegraphing out at the puck. The art of telegraphing is a very simple and easy process to practice. However, because of its simplicity, most goaltenders do not bother practicing it. It does not necessarily require shots, and yes, it can even be practiced outside the arena. A goaltender should not always rely on the markings on the ice, and although very helpful at times, the different arenas are marked differently, and not always true to spec. That's why it is so important to tap the post with your stick, or feel the post with your glove, prior to advancing out of the net. If a goaltender is off his angle by one inch when he leaves the net, that inch will multiply rapidly as he comes out. What happens is you actually enhance the shooter's chances of beating you. When off angle, the further you come out to take your position hurts your angle with the puck. When you come out to take your position and your angle is accurate, it leaves very little room for the shooter to score. In our first drill, we will be telegraphing way out of the net to each of the pucks. As you can see, the pucks have been placed in a very large semicircle stretching outside of the blue line. The goaltender will begin by tapping the posts and then telegraphing out 20 feet towards the puck. Once he has stopped, his partner will skate up behind him and take his spot, lining his skates up to ensure the same position. The goaltender will then go have a look at the puck and check his angle and positioning out. From there, they will reverse rolls and complete the same routine. In the progression of this exercise, the goaltenders will no longer take one another's place, but be guided by their partner. Here they will go through a series of pucks before trading places. The goaltender will begin from the post and telegraph out to a designated puck. His partner will then advise him of his level of accuracy. From here, the goaltender will not move back to the net, but across to the next puck. See how many pucks the goaltender can take before losing his net. Once he loses his net, send him back to touch his posts and gain perspective. During team practices when the players are taking shots, have them shoot from outside the blue line and have your goaltender begin from the post and move out to the hash marks to stop the shots. Remember, he only gets to tap the post on the first shot of the round. 
Here you will be able to monitor his progress. Be sure to have the other goalie or someone inform the goaltender on his positioning. Let him know where he is and how he is doing. Everyone else on the ice can see his exact position and what is open on the net. Everyone but him. That's what makes this so difficult to do and practice. He is very dependent upon what you see, so please take the time to help him adjust. Spending anywhere from three to five minutes per practice going over angles and positioning can make such a big difference in his performance down the stretch. Don't forget, you can practice telegraphing in the backyard or in a room. You don't need an official size net. A table or two sticks in the ground will do fine. What you will need is someone to help you out and be the shooter's eyes. Begin by placing five or so pucks at different locations on the floor then tapping both sides of the table. Move out, at a puck. Then back to the table and tap again and move out at the next puck. Keep repeating. Once you feel confident, tap and move out on a puck and then move directly to the second and third puck, seeing your degree of accuracy. Practice until you can hit all of your targets without going back to your post. Knowing your net and crease area to perfection will allow you to actually go inside the eyes of the shooter. Knowing exactly what he sees will enable you to know what his options are and which one he is likely to take. Remember that there is always a reason for a player to take a shot or a pass. He doesn't shoot at the short side because there is no room to score. He shoots there because he sees a larger place to put the puck. When a player decides to go around the goalie and put it into the open side, he does it because the goalie has come out far enough that he doesn't have any room to shoot. When you think about it, the player didn't make any of those choices. The goaltender made them all for him by his position. What most commonly happens is that he told the shooter what to do, but is unaware of it himself. If he could only see what the shooter sees. But if he knows exactly where he is in relation to the net, he can. A good example of this is a shootout. I see so many young goalies. No, I see so many goalies, period, dart way out of their net on a shootout. Some go almost past the hash marks. I see them lose track of their position when the shooter changes speeds or backs them way too far into the net. The key is to know how many steps outside the crease you have taken and know where and when to hold up on the crease line. Here's a simple test to do. If you are one of those goalies who comes way out, have a player come down on you and ask him to back you into the net before he shoots. After the shot has been taken, look down to see where exactly you are in your net. Then put a puck on the inside hash mark and the goaltender on the top of his crease, touching the circle line. Have the player skate down as fast as he can and take the puck and stuff it in on either side. But you can't move until the player touches the puck. You will notice that from that close, going as fast as he can, you can still get over to that side and cover up that part of the net. What you really want to do is first determine if you want the player to shoot or deke. However, to keep exact tabs on where you are is quite simple. Just take one good size step outside your crease and back in only one step very slowly. This keeps the net out of view and allows you to hold up on your crease line, minimizing the opportunity of the shooter. You should be on the top of your crease when the puck reaches the hash marks. This will greatly assist you in not beating yourself by getting caught too deep in your net. What all of these drills will allow you to do is to know where the net is in relation to the puck and hopefully have you in the middle. When you are applying these strategies to the game, what you want to do is this. Always watch and anticipate where the shot will be coming from, the release of the shot. When someone is standing off to the side, pay close attention to where the stick is. Even if it does not yet have the puck on it, use it as a guide to where you will be centering yourself. Sometimes you know that someone is off to the side of the net, and then when the pass goes over, so do you. However, just going over does not mean you will be centered with the puck. 
In this next drill, we will have a player around the face-off dot with the pucks and another off to the side of the net. The goaltender must use his peripheral vision to keep track of the shooter beside the net while maintaining proper position and angle with the player with the pucks. The shooter with the pucks will attempt to pass to the other shooter or shoot short side if the goalie is not properly positioned. The goalie will keep track of the player's stick and center himself with the puck being released on the player's stick. Here, your timing can be very crucial. You want to move out at the puck, not just across. When your timing is off, you can actually slide right past the puck, giving the shooter a lot more room to shoot than you would like. The more times you spend working on your timing and centering, the better it will become. This drill is based on a game situation and the players should treat it as such. You want them taking the same shot they would actually take in a game. In another version of this drill, you will not have the players stationary. Have them move about a designated area, watching the goalie's position, but more importantly, communicating with the goalie, letting him know exactly what you see in terms of options. Again, if the goaltender knows his net, he will know exactly what the player is seeing and understand why he chose a pass or a shot. The time spent on improving your angles and positioning should be the goaltender's primary concern. And in many cases, the goaltender can utilize many of the coach's drill and situations and use them to work on his needs as well. One of the most effective drills to work on and understand positioning is by having the players form a semicircle 10 to 15 feet from the net. Place all of the pucks in the corners with a passing player manning each corner. The goaltender will begin on the post facing the puck carrier. The pass will come out from the corner to a player who will shoot the puck quickly. Here is where different styles come into play, resulting in different moves for each style of goaltender. Here we have a rather large stand-up style goaltender. Now, looking from the player's point of view, where would you say the puck will be going? If you sent the five hole, you were right. That is his best option. As the goalie moves out on the puck, he is covering the majority of the net. And yes, his five hole is open. He must learn to close it up very quickly. Now this is where your timing is so important. He must move out of his net, achieve post to post, and close his legs at the same time as the puck is released. Too soon, the player will read it, and too late, the puck will be in the net. What allowed this play to take place was several factors. One was the goalie's position prior to getting the puck, and the other was the player's position. If we break down each position, notice that the goalie has one leg tight to the post. The other is covering the post on the other side from the shooter's view. His best shot is five hole. If you look at the player's position, we notice that it is off to the side of the net so the goalie has a very easy time of covering post to post. Now if we were to change the player's position and move him a little closer to the slot area, you will notice that it changes everything. The goaltender can no longer cover a post to post view of the net. Now where would you put that puck if you were the shooter? Hopefully you said the wide side of the net. Notice that because of the location of the shooter, the goaltender's pads look a little closer together. His shot is quite obvious. The goalie moves out, off the post going directly over to that side, again timing his movements with the shot. Notice that here the goalie cannot just move out at the puck and close his legs. He must make a movement to the other side, soliding up the bottom end of the net. While moving to the side, the player is attempting to score on. Now we will replace our goalie with one of another style of play. He is a butterfly goaltender, very common in today's styles of play. The interesting thing about most butterfly goaltenders is that they always entice the shooters to shoot for the five hole. From their perspective, almost 80% of all goals scored are low, and they plan on covering that. A big five hole always catches the eyes of the shooter, and even if they know that the goalie will be closing his legs, most feel that they can put the puck through before he closes them. 
The same procedure applies as before, with the exception that he will collapse his stance rather than close his legs from the side shots. As they get closer to the slot, his wide stance still gives close to a post-to-post -post action. He must move out very fast, centering himself with the puck so the player only sees the big five hole, timing the release of the shot with his knees hitting the ice. Remember, each style can be adapted to this drill, and we have only shown two. Don't be forcing a goaltender to stand and close his legs if they are too far apart, or force one to go down. Both styles are effective, each in their own way. Don't forget to communicate with the goalie and the players. Someone has to tell the goaltender if his positioning is correct or off. He cannot do it all by himself. Notice that this goaltender is angling his foot out towards the shooter he feels will be getting the pass. This is allowing him to move out at the shooter with more speed and accuracy. Here it is very important to note where the puck is being passed from. You can move your foot out just far enough to keep it from the view of the player carrying the puck in the corner. If he moves it too far, the player may attempt to bank the puck off the goaltender and into the net. Notice that the line of the puck cannot touch the skate. As the puck changes position, so will the goalie's position of his opposite foot. The other will remain tight to the post to get a good push off. A goaltender's stance and foot position is a very reliable source to evaluate his strengths and weaknesses. It does not mean, however, that one style is better than the other. Both styles have strengths and weaknesses some of which may have never been brought to your attention before. A goaltender's strengths and weaknesses in his positional play are derived by the position of his feet. That's right, the position of his feet. A goaltender's foot position can actually help you scout out an opposition goalie and help you understand your strengths and weaknesses. To understand this philosophy, we will take a closer look at two very popular traditional styles. First, we will look at a very traditional stand-up, always square to the shooter. This goaltender, when exemplifying true angles and position, becomes a very difficult goalie to score on by taking off wing shots, mainly because of their position. As you can see, there is very little chance for a shot to get through. However, his weakness lies in his lateral movement. If we take a closer look at how his feet are positioned, you will see they are exactly square with the puck. For this goaltender to get across the net, notice how they will have to move over and across to get into position for a rink-wide pass. Look how the legs have to open up to enable him to get across to the other side. His strength becomes his positioning on shots and his weakness becomes his lateral movement and five hole. Now we will look at a butterfly goaltender, or goalie, with a much wider stance. The wider the stance, the less distance you will travel outside the crease, because you don't want to start covering up the outside of the net. Therefore, you do two things. One is you don't come out quite as far as the other goalies, and second, you will drop your far side skate back towards the net. This allows the goaltender to cover post to post, having one pad cover each corner of the net. If you take a look at the foot position, you will notice that he is not square with the puck, and although covering the lower net well, his upper body is twisted and not facing the puck square. He is not maximizing his upper body. By his feet being more square to the net rather than the puck, it enables him to attain incredible lateral movement, robbing players blind from what seemed to be an open net. The biggest weakness with this style is the short side of the net. More often than not, this goalie can be caught moving to his strength, leaving the short side of the net too soon. He is more susceptible to off-wing shots, relying heavily on reflexes. Often you can catch this goaltender with a weight imbalance because he places most of his weight on the leg closest to the post, readying himself to go long side. Because of his position and the collapse of his pads during his movements, he becomes difficult to score on between the legs on deeks or players moving in on goal from the side or off wing. The lower end of his net 
is very well maintained. Which goalie are you, and how do you fit into the equation? Remember, a goalie who is always square to the puck and very positional dares you to make the perfect shot. A wider stance goaltender who squares with the net rather than the puck feeds the open shooter at the side of the net because he feels he can get there extremely fast and usually relies on reflex. Aggressive or passive? Which are you or your goaltenders? And what does it mean? In today's style of play, the goaltender controls much more of the game than he realizes through his position. An aggressive goaltender takes more control over many situations that may arise during the play and limits their options, while a passive goaltender allows the plays to come to him, optimizing his position as the play forms. During a breakaway, an aggressive goaltender will come out and force the shooter's options, while a passive goaltender will sit back and wait out the shooter. Both strategies work. What you have to do is find out which one works best for you as an individual. One makes things happen, the other waits for things to happen. Let's take a closer look at both and be sure to allow a proper evaluation of each before committing to one or the other. In a situation where a forward is attempting to blow around your defenseman and go towards the net, a passive goaltender will fall back and hug his post opening the lane and allowing the forward to advance. Whereas an aggressive goalie will take away that lane and option. Holding the top of the crease line takes away the open lane, forcing the shooter to go behind the net. Let's take a look from the overhead. Here you can see the open lane the shooter has if the goalie retreats too soon. The player will take what he sees and knows if he gets around the defenseman, he will have an opportunity to make a play at the net. Look at how much of the lane is left when the goalie stands his ground on the high end of the crease. If you are that player, what would you be doing? Well, if you're smart and looking for your best option, you could have to abort your attempt to get in front of the net and go behind it to set up a play. Time and again, the player's decision has been reached because of the goaltender's position so who really has control over which play will happen? That's right, the goaltender. The pump is a very intense goalie drill designed to pump up a goaltender's confidence and mental play. It has several steps in the progression of building and maintaining a high level of confidence and focus. It is often used to break a goaltender out of a slump or prepare him for an important game or tournament. We will begin by showing you the final stage of this excellent exercise. Here, we have placed five pucks in a semicircle barely outside the crease area. The shooter will skate in from the blue line with as much speed and power as he can possibly muster. Once he gets to the puck, he will take his hardest and most accurate slap shot anywhere he wants, with the goalie staying very deep in his crease. The goaltender will prepare himself by psyching himself up prior to getting into his stance and focusing solely on the puck and his position before signaling the player to start. Now, here comes the shooter. If you were taking this shot, where would you put it? Great save. Now <laughs> that's got to feel good. Stopping a point-blank shot as hard as the player could shoot from that range. I think I want to see that one more time. Once you get to that level, it's like, bring them all on. Confidence, intensity, focus is all at a premium. Now, what enables the goaltender to react to shots like this? Is it reflex? Luck? What about anticipation or timing? Let's start from the beginning. Before you can start this drill, ensure that your goaltender knows his crease area very well. We will also begin with a very stern warning. As easily as it can build up a goaltender's confidence, it can also destroy him if not conducted properly. Try to use only a very competent shooter and use the same one or limit it to a select few. In the first stage of the drill, you want to prime the pump. We will begin with the goaltender's timing. Place five pucks in a semicircle just outside the crease area. 
The shooter will again start at the blue line. He must take a straight line from the center of the net, the puck, and himself. Both the shooter and the goaltender will know exactly where each puck will go. All of these shots will be taken low to the glove side. The goaltender will get his timing down with the release of the shot. You will go through the five main holes in the net. Once your goaltender can go through the four corners and the five hole with ease, it is time to go into the next stage of the drill. Here you will move the pucks a little further outside the crease line, so the player has more room to wind up and take his hardest shot, without worry of colliding with a goalie. At this point, both the goalie and the shooter know exactly where each shot will go. Here we start working on his confidence. Watch the intensity build up on his face in preparation for each shot. He has to focus on the puck and the release of it by the shooter. This will enable him to react with precision when timing the release of the puck. The intensity buildup is so great that it must be released from the goaltender by exploding out at the puck. The goaltender should try to bring himself down to a relaxed state of mind, then begin building it up all over again. In this next level of the drill, the goaltender will now attempt to see through the eyes of the player. Everything will remain the same, placement of the pucks and shooter, both knowing where the pucks will be shot. Now the player will become the key. He will assist the goaltender in telling him exactly what he sees. If the player looks down the ice at the puck and would take the same shot both he and the goalie had set up for, then he leaves and goes in for the shot. However, if the goaltender's placement in the net signals the shooter to take a different shot, he will tell the goaltender so he may adjust his position. If he sees too much room where he is going to take the shot, he will also let him know because he can easily score. When you know your net to perfection and exactly what the shooter sees, you will know where the puck is going. You learn what is too much or too little. Once you have finished off this part of the drill, you are ready for the final stage. The shooter will now go by body language. No more letting one another know what each other is thinking. Remember that this drill is for the goaltender and that any player purposely trying to deceive the goaltender in this drill can really tamper with his confidence and timing. So please be careful who you select for this important task. Always remember that as a goalie, you control what the shooter sees. Knowing your net and position allows you to see through the eyes of the shooter. Thank you for watching Where It's At, an in-depth look at angles and positioning by Gold in the Net. We hope that the ideas and concepts you have seen today will help you and your team strike Gold in the Net.